Uh, no, it's on the hole somewhere. Okay, I'm gonna be back here at 12:30 for Sean. So I'll just go get something to eat. Then. We have to have to go get something. I, I gotta. I don't know. I'm gonna take it to lunch. So. Yeah, you're gonna go with that. Fortunately, the rest of the world doesn't stop when we're doing this. <laughs> yeah, that. The phone the entire time in here is going. Rrr. You want me to sit over there in the hot seat? Or uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Over there. I hate yeah. having you sit in that thing. <laughs> Just go ahead and hug me up. Let's get that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I need to relax. You pee on the floor. <laughs> uh, all right, let me finish. Let me put the time we finished with um, Dan here. So you're going back to the road, huh? Yeah, yeah. The chief wants to keep things moving as far as people that experience different jobs. So after eight and a half years, this is my next week would be my wow. guess, my last week. So Here's my card, sir. Okay. You want to lie? I'll see. Sure. You don't no mind. Your name definitely sounds familiar. Yeah, right? I was up here with my partner when we were with Montgomery County, and we were. I forget what case we would have been working. Was it, it was something right? I think to do with um Did a guy rob Kroger's? Yeah, it could have been that he was robbing a different Kroger store. They all run together after a while. Yeah, I, I don't know, it's been it's been a while back, I think. Okay, what's your first name? Rodney. Rodney, that's right. Rodney Curd. C U R D. Eight, eight, fourteen. Okay, Rodney, like I tell everyone, you guys are peripheral. Your involvement's in the peripheral of this investigation, more of an investigative capacity. Um, like, But I tell everybody, because there's a death involved, two deaths, um, that I tell everybody that, you know, you're, despite what you may have been told by your bosses, you're not compelled to talk to me. You can walk out of here at any time. If you get frustrated, you can leave at any time. We're not Mirandizing people that um, involvement has been uh, uh, not directly related with the incident, if you know what I mean. You know where I'm getting at. I, I do. So, uh, Rodney, how long you worked with Beaver Creek Police Department? Uh, 26 years. 26 years. And how long you been a detective? Uh, eight and a half. And are you assigned general assignment? Yes. Also present is Letitia Schuler. She's a um, special agent with the Javier Criminal Investigation. And for this interview, Rodney, tell me how the, the basically you became to become involved in this. Okay. Uh, I was off duty at home. I uh, got a call of a uh, uh, shooting that occurred at Walmart uh, and shortly after I realized there was an officer involved shooting so uh, who called I, you? Uh, dispatch uh, one of the dispatchers called and I was aware that other detectives are, were coming out which didn't surprise me because you know when something happens it's all hands on deck so I knew everybody else in our little section here would be coming out as well so uh, I uh, arrived a short time later at uh, at Walmart, and I just let me start talking about it. Or <laughs> no, go ahead. I'm okay. sorry. It just doesn't. It's endless. Uh, so uh, anyway, I arrived a short time later at Walmart. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't even make it into the inside of the store. Uh, uh, Detective Chad Lindsay met me in the parking lot, and uh, he you know probably been there a couple of minutes. Uh, and he said that the uh, is Chad general assignment. Yes, yes. Okay. yes. Is everybody basically general yeah, assignment? Yeah, we, we go by basically by districts. You know, we have three districts oh, here. You don't have them all, do you? Uh, no, no. I'm district uh, two right now, which what is kind of right where we're at here, actually. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so anyway, he he met me out in the park lot. He said that the guy. Uh, that was shot. His girlfriend had brought him to the store and uh, she's currently in Officer Brownlee's vehicle and they're going to run her up to the station. He wanted to know if, if I could go talk to her. 
which you know didn't surprise me again because you know I've been. Were you briefed totally on the circumstances? No, no, because we it was still still kind of fluid. I mean I I believe there was possibility that he had brought a gun in with him. I mean we were still and really nobody knew anything much at that time. So and and part of my interview was centered with that. I mean the believing that he had possibly brought a weapon in with him. I don't know if you've seen my interview, but you know I kind of went after her a little bit. You know saying you know that you know I don't necessarily believe that he would have taken a gun in the store and you didn't see. So did you when you cleared the scene? Did you so did you just did he they asked you to do that and then you responded back to the station. Who did you interview the lady with? I was by myself. It is recorded. And what's her name? Tasha Thomas. Okay. Good, Rod. So anyway, so I spent a couple hours with her actually in the next room over talking to her, and you know we talked a little bit about how how she knew him, and and then we worked our way into the events of the evening and where she picked him up and approximately the time and. What did she say about where she picked him up in the timeline? She said about six o'clock that evening she picked him up at the Premium Outlets in in Cincinnati, which I guess is Monroe. Yeah. And she said that her his mother had brought him there and then he got in her suburban. At least she believed his mother. I guess you know she didn't really see the mother, but I think he told her that's who brought him. So. I don't know. I don't want to keep. No, no, no. I, I want to. I want to get into. I mean, I don't want to get into every little nuance of the interview because yeah, sure. we're going to watch it. Sure. But my main concern is the timeline of what she tells you, mm-hmm. of when she picked him up, the gun. When you questioned her about bringing a gun, I do know that it. It certainly appears that he removed a toy gun or a pellet gun or earsoft, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. from the store. So. Uh, I want to know what she says about picking him up, what the purpose was for the trip. Right. And so he was going to, uh, <clears throat> he got in her vehicle, and, and one thing, I don't you know, know if you've done this search warrant and all that stuff, but she may, I asked her, I said, what did he have with him? Because, again, I, you know, at the time I believed it was a good possibility he had the gun with him. Uh, I, I asked her what, what he had with him, and she said he got in the, in the uh, Suburban with a white grocery bag. You know, she just described it as being a plastic bag, and she didn't really know what was in there. Uh, and and you know, we we moved in. Did, did he have a gun with him? And she said, No, I don't. You know, don't know him to carry a gun. And again, I kind of, you know, got a little aggressive with her. I guess, <clears throat> excuse me, with my with my interview because I thought there's no way that this guy carried a gun in the store, and she didn't know about it. And we talked about his uh, his history. If she uh, was aware that you know. If he would carry a gun, and she swore up and down that she didn't think he ever had carried a gun, and, and had never seen him with one. I mean, we talked for quite a while about that. Um, so she said at six o'clock she picked him up. They drove uh, uh, straight to uh, to Walmart, and the reason for going to Walmart, she lives in Fairborn, which of course is just beyond Beaver Creek, so mm-hmm. you know, it makes sense as far as her travels. Uh, she said they that they were going to make some s'mores and and they wanted to stop at you know a store to get that and she said also she wanted to look for uh, uh, uniform tops for her uh, let's see, for her uh, work and uh, uh, she said that so they decided to stop at the Walmart there and and they ended up there I got my notes now. I think she said between what she thought would be I think seven fifteen seven thirty time frame okay. So, you know, again, we talked about, okay, when, when you guys got out of the car uh, and you know, she would start describing your car to me and stuff, uh, did he have anything with him? And, and she swore up and down he didn't have anything with him, so this bag she's talking about should still be in the car. Uh, and uh, uh, she said, you know, they start, start shopping. And one thing I didn't mention, during the ride down, she mentioned that his uh, baby's mama, who she called Lisa, kept calling him repeatedly, and it sounded like you know, 
to our conversation where she's crying part of the time. You know how that goes. Right. She was upset when we started, so it wasn't an easy interview. But but he he would have talked to her uh, at least once during the during the ride. But it sounded like you know she was giving him a hard time about uh, uh, not wanting him to see the kids when she wasn't there and, and stuff like that. Just kind of child care things. And so most of the calls evidently went to his voicemail. So uh, he, when they went in the store, I guess she called him again, and <clears throat> they were in the uh, ladies section. And, I, and she described, you know, what kind of stuff she would have in her car because, you know, and everything was, you know, evacuated. So she mentioned about the, you know, the, the s'mores and things of that nature should be there. And uh, this um Get about it later on when we went in the store to, uh, uh, you know, help uh, clear because there was like a wall up found in one aisle and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure there wasn't anything that somebody would have dropped. I found where she she was at in the ladies section and and that cart was there with uh, okay. the work shirt and the s'mores and stuff. So I, I realized what area she was in. But anyway, so she's in that area. The phone rings again. Uh, she says, "Hey, baby, go take the." go take the call and, you know, deal with it, go somewhere. So he walked behind her and did answer the call, and she said that's the last time she saw him. Uh, she claimed she didn't hear any any shooting or, or, or anything else going on. A uh, uh, short time later, an employee, she believes an employee at Walmart, asked her to uh, to leave, and, uh, and then, you know, she was kind of forced outside, and she left her card there. And uh, a short time later, when she was asking about it, she was looking for, for John, that uh, a police officer approached her and realized there was a connection there and put her in uh, his car. And that, I believe that would be Officer Brownlee that uh, would have initially contacted her. But Did she arrive in Brownlee's car? Yes. To the PD? Yes, she did. Um, based on what you know now, uh, was her statements pretty much accurate? Yes. Uh, we we also one thing I forgot to mention. I I asked her. I said, you know, uh, well, I asked her, you know, are you under the influence of anything? Have you been drinking or anything? And she would admit to that. Now she act, you know, a little. I don't want to say lethargic, but it could be because she was so upset too. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but you know, I did ask her that. And I asked her about his uh, demeanor um, and. Uh, uh, she, you know, wouldn't admit to him having anything to drink. She did say he smelled like weed. So, you know, that might be something in the talks about, mm -hmm. uh, amongst other things, who knows. But um, she did, did say he smelled like, like weed. Um, she used the word weed? Yes. Okay. Was that the gist of your interview with her? I... Uh, yeah, yeah. Cause I, I mean, we got we have it. So yeah, you know, again, I I go after about you know I don't I'm, I'm having trouble believing that that this guy would have had hands on a firearm and you didn't see him. You know, mm -hmm. he, you know, so you know that's a portion of it. But again, I I was a little bit disadvantaged. You lack the knowledge of. I, I did, I did, <laughs> and sometimes that well we're all there, you know. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah. At least she was locked in the yeah. statement. But. You had incomplete information on the facts, yeah. and then you interviewed her. Um, you initially believed he brought the gun into the Walmart. That's yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Yeah, and you know nobody was able to tell me otherwise because everything was kind of. How'd you difficult. end the interview with her? Uh, we uh, victim witness arrived here, uh, and uh, I had them come in and talk to her. I did have her complete a statement, which I believe you guys. Probably got a mm -hmm. copy of by now, uh, and uh, I, I notified her that that he was deceased. She didn't seem to know that at the time. So um, her mom arrived here, and uh, so I had her. Well, I guess we we had her go out in the lobby, and then I sent her off with with mom. Um, she signed a consent to search for her vehicle. And a consent to search for the cell phone, which Officer Brownlee had and gave to me. Whose cell phone? Uh, uh, Tasha's. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, um, so I got all that stuff signed. I mean, because initially we were kind of moving that direction, and it didn't surprise me. We ended up with the search warrant under the circumstances. So, 
uh, but at least got that done. Uh, and you know, basically sent her with Mom. Uh, she did show up at the scene shortly after. After I uh, did a few things here, I went uh, to Walmart. She came out there with her mom and uh, was kind of wondering what was going on with her uh, suburban. Because I told her, I said, you know, I don't know what the timeline is. I said, you know, certainly we're not going to try to keep her vehicle any longer than we have to. Because she mentioned that. You know, it was Tasha Tom's, right? Yes, yes. She's a home health care aide and, and needs uh, needs her car, needs her cell phone, you know, just like anybody. But mm -hmm. I said, you know, under the circumstances, I can't say how long we're going to keep it, but but we want to make sure we accomplish what we have to mm -hmm. before we release it. So, mm -hmm. uh, and that was probably. About did my you do time. anything at the scene? No, the only thing I did uh, since uh, they were bringing your guys in, we didn't do. I didn't do any evidence work or anything else. Uh, uh, the only thing I did, I went in and walked uh, about the aisles looking for purses and wallets and anything that needed to be secured before you know you guys would have released the scene the next day. So, uh, and but you know that of course gave me an opportunity to find that right. grocery card and it, it was right where she said it would be. Had the basically the stuff and she said also. Uh, so you know in the end, I I guess I would have to believe that. She didn't know anything about any, any weapon, and and she, you know, she claimed she didn't hear any shots fired, which, yeah, it's a little little surprising. But I had a we had a homicide here uh, a couple of years ago where there was five people sleeping in a two-story house, and the son uh, shot the dad downstairs and shot him like five times, and nobody heard a thing. You know, so yeah, I guess it happens. <laughs> You went back to the uh, the cell phone. You guys took the cell phone. I know she had the the battery. She had tape over it. Mm -hmm. Did you guys? Did anybody take the tape or the battery off of the back of that off of the phone? Not that I know of. But there seems I... to be a SIM card or the uh, other micro card missing, so we can't locate it. Okay. It, I I did not. I got okay. a call from Brownlee. Okay. Um, we're just trying to attempt to locate that yeah. to give that back to her because when we re returned her phone to her, um, she was significantly upset that the card wasn't in there because it had all of her pictures on there. Huh. So, which I understand, but no. I just wanted to ask you. I, the, no, I mean, I don't know why he would have removed it and not okay. given it to me, but I, I put it in exactly. Okay. He, he said he turned it off. And I, I also I didn't want to mess with it. I know, okay. you know, sometimes you want to put them in airplane mode or whatever. Sure. But I thought, well, with it off, we're probably in good shape. But okay. uh, um, th and you know, again, I just put a property and kind of um, kind of as is. As is. I didn't, didn't do anything to it. Good to you have anything else? That was it. Just yeah. you, already, you already said the consent part, and I got yeah, to see I mean, the interview and talk to Tasha yesterday. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, so she guys it. were going to be involved. We kind of yeah, make one of down what normally do. So yeah, yeah. Is so there anything, Rod? I didn't ask you that you think I need to know. No, not that I can think of. I mean, you know, again, she talked. We talked about the ride and about uh, her her contacts with him. Um, she did mention along with the drug part that, that he told her at one time he had, he had dealt uh, some drugs. He, I, he never made any type of admission to her about any type of weapons, but it sounds like... Did know, he, and it, he said at one point his life dealt drugs? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but you know, as far as any weapons handling, of course he does have a criminal history for a weapons violation, but um, that's not like she admitted any of that to him. Okay. But, but I, I can't think of anything. No, that's fine. And you got my card, so yes. if anything comes yes. to mind, you can call up to teacher me. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll get you uh, um, there to here soon. I got to record. Okay, yes. Yep. Out, yep. So. yep. Okay. Okay. We'll be here a few days. Oh, yeah. Thanks, that. All right, thank you. Ooh, my foot fell asleep. Would you, uh, would you walk up there and just tell them to turn the videos off? Well, sure. Thank well, you. Okay.